Bun's first version is here. Now, version one usually means that it is stable, it is production ready. Let's just check this out in this video. How true is that? What exactly is Bun if you are living under the rock? And let's discuss about why this would actually kill a lot of Node.js and the ecosystem around it. So it all started with a 10 minute keynote release in which Bun and the team actually went through over like what exactly is Bun, what all features are there, which is primarily the runtime and the package manager and you know, a bunch of more more things and that's it the release was short the release was quick it did not discuss everything of course and it did not also touch upon windows support which is actually there in the bun's first version but what is interesting in this blog post which is the version one release is that today bun is stable and production ready this is a bold statement right and i love bun and i love the progress which has been made over the last few months and we use it some places in our tooling as well in code dam not everywhere of course and not as a runtime just yet but still, it is a bold statement to say that Bun is stable and production ready. Let's see if that holds up. Of course, before getting into that, let's try to understand what exactly Bun is and why this is a big, big change. JavaScript has matured a lot. When I say matured, I mean in terms of feature set, in terms of how many people actually know the language and how many companies actually actively use the language on production, not only on front end, but also on back end. This is a big deal because if you go back 10 years, 15 years down the line, I mean, in the past, you would figure out that PHP ruled the world, right? Ruby was there. A lot of languages were there. They are still here, but a significant chunk of share is also taken by Node.js, right? It might be small, but startups and, you know, mid-sized companies these days are using Node.js and JavaScript in general more and more to run applications, not only on client, but also on server. With that being said, Node and JavaScript still suffers from a few horrible problems. The first one is how the ecosystem system is in general. Ecosystem is completely broken. There is no standard library as such for Node.js. There is no bundler inbuilt or, you know, there is no transpiler inbuilt. You can't even watch changes to your file without a node mon or a client like that. Node did not have a native fetch client as well since version 18 itself or version 16, in which it was experimental. So things have been progressing, but not at the speed at which authors or the creators of one would like. And the second point is the speed of the runtime, you know, how fast things are getting executed. Now, before Bun, nobody actually, like, I won't say that somebody actually considered Node as very slow or, you know, Node as something which could be made faster. Of course, like, it takes a split second, it takes a couple of seconds to run an NPM command. We were all used to it. But Bun, what it did is that it actually optimized every single pathway, code line, you know, just going into details of things and just optimizing everything away. And it turns out that there was a lot of scope for optimization. If you look at the graphs in this blog post, you would be surprised to know that it achieves like a significant speed up. This is the ES build moment of, you know, Node.js. So when ES build came out, Webpack seemed like a joke, right? If you go to ES build website, you would see these graphs. This graph has been there like since a year or a couple of years, but this graph looks like a joke on Webpack, right? Webpack 5 is taking 40 seconds where ES build is doing it in 0.37 seconds. That's a hundred times speed up. This is a completely different thing, but it seems like Bun, when it comes out, it takes pretty much the same approach, right? I mean, it's not a hundred times speed up, but it's still like, if you're comparing it with TSC in this particular example, it's close to 50 times, right? So it's crazy. The order of magnitudes, like when you go from a speed up of whatever you are at to 10 times speed up, this figure might seem, you know, it's useless, like 350 milliseconds, okay. It just takes me eight milliseconds now. So I would not even realize 350 milliseconds, but imagine a build pipeline, which actually takes like a few tens of minutes with Node.js, right? Or, you know, even our build, for example, at Vercel takes four minutes. If you speed that up by 10 times, it would take 24 seconds, which is insane amount of speed up. Now, I mean, Technically speaking, it might or might not save us a lot of time in terms of, you know, building a new feature or doing anything because, you know, at the end of the day, we have to write code. But the sense of accomplishment or the sense of, you know, speed up it gives in previews and how fast you are able to iterate or how fast even your local server works, it's a massive productivity win. This tooling is a massive productivity win. Bun takes it one more step further, like, you know, it's 50x as well in some cases, it's 4x in other cases, but it's always a speed up. 
then one of the biggest things which people are happy about including myself is that bun solves a problem i don't exactly know if there are any gotchas here i haven't personally used bun to solve the esm and common js thing but it solves it completely it means you can do a statement like this which is pretty much impossible in you know javascript because you can't write it one of the engines would complain if you're running it as esm it will say require is not defined if you're running it as common js it will say import is not defined and trust me this ecosystem is fully broken right now there exist packages like nano id for example the recent one which i use there are other packages as well i'm forgetting names right now but nano id for example the latest version doesn't work with common js it needs esm import similarly i think package apollo client apollo client does not work with esm very well you need to have a common js build i might be wrong i'm just I'm just a little fuzzy on the details, but there was one project, side project, which I was working on, which used Apollo Client and Nano together, and it was a disaster. The reason for that is I was not able to make it work because both of them require one or another format. The actual way you make this work is that you use common JS as the output thing, but you dynamically import ESM modules wherever it's required using await import syntax, right? Now, this takes care of it, right? You don't have to do all this magic to make it work. It solves a big problem. And to be very honest, I mean, if you're a beginner or if you're somebody who's, you know, just trying to get a side project up and running, the least you want to care about is this battle between common JS and ESM, right? As a developer or as somebody who's working towards a business or building something productive, it doesn't matter. Like it's okay. Okay. There are systems, there are practices which are bad some pros and cons of require and common JS. But as a developer who's coding an application, I don't want to know about it, right? It's the responsibility of the runtime, it's responsibility of bundler or anything to handle that and give me the result I want. One fixes that, which is great. Also, one very important thing which people usually overlook is that Bun is also a bundler, which means that it can work as an ES build alternative. Now, again, internally, I don't know how they achieve this thing where Bun is actually faster than even ES build. So the graph you see here, it'll actually put Bun in number one place. It does achieve that, but is it because ES build is slow or is it because builds done after ES build executed by Node.js are slower? I don't know where Bun actually gets its speed up but this is good to know es build i mean if you're using es build and you want to switch to bun if we compile our backend which is like tens of thousands of lines of code with es build and it happens under a second so i can tell you like this software is fast so unless you have unless you are on webpack you know and you want to switch to es build or bun i don't see any stronger reason right now to move from es build to bun but i mean if you're using bun as a tooling you might as well just ditch es build completely the benefit of this is that bun actually provides a compatible API, the plugin API. So on our code dump backend, we use ES build and we have a few, you know, plugins which are injected into ES builds build pipeline to clean up a few files, do some things which we want to do. And that also fits in nicely with Bun. So it provides a compatible API. One of the best, best things I like about Bun is that it doesn't break node. So it says that it's a drop in replacement for Node.js runtime, which is again, a huge commitment to say that, you know, you can just alias node as bun and be done with it and everything should work fine. But is it true? Let's try to find by replacing node with bun as a binary and try to build our front end. So for code damn front end, you know that we use Vercel, you know that we use GitHub obviously, and we tried to shift it. I, you know, tried this as an experiment myself yesterday, figuring out if we can just, you know, drop and replace bun, you know, node with bun and see how it works. Well, of course, a few first few builds fail because we are using somewhere in generators, some custom things as well, which are of course, I can't share the code with you. But after a few builds, what we figured out that it's just not possible right now. And the reason for that is we don't know. So at least in our case, we don't know what happens. But after the Versal build is done, bun, when it's built with bun, it just fails with this error, no such file or directory L start inside Babel highlight some plugin. Now, of course, we could debug this, we could figure out what's going wrong. But long story short, at least in our case, bun is not a drop in replacement for node. Because the only thing we changed is we changed yarn from bun, replaced yarn and used bun. We changed the log file from yarn.log to bun log file. And that's it. We just installed bun on the CI server of this Versal and used bun to build it. It builds fine, but then Versal just crashes the build. So, I mean, it could be a small thing we could 
could raise a request right now with Ban and we wanted to do that. We just did not get time to get around that. But long story short is that it's not production. I mean, it could be production ready. I don't want to say it's not production ready. It's just not a drop in replacement just for our use case yet. And this front end is complex, mind you. Like it's not a simple thing. It would have worked if it was like simple to medium complex, but we built a full VS code version, right? So we have a lot of tree mending, tree shaking happening in the build. I don't know where the problem is, but it just, in our case, it just doesn't work like that, that you just shift the binary and it will work. The build happens. We don't know what happens at the end, but the build fails. Versal just fails the build at the end. And by the way, we don't use Babel as a package. So it's, it's a, you know, a nested level dependency. Some package is using something else where some error happens. It might not be because of bun at all. I don't know. All we did was just changing NPM to bun, making sure like everything is compatible, changing node to bun and the build crashes. Bun is also an extremely fast installer. And I have seen this firsthand myself, but on cold starts, I'm not so sure. So let's just put it to a test. Let's just go to code dams repository. Let me just remove the bun global cache, which has already been installed. Let me try to install bun, you know, node modules again with bun first, and then we'll try it with yarn next. Okay. So there we go. Node modules are, are installed now. And let's just try and see how much time it actually takes bun to install it. So it took close to a minute for Bun to install everything. And let's just try now and see how fast does Yarn install it. Okay, so first of all, let me just remove all the cache from Yarn as well. So it's a fair competition. So there should be no global cache from Yarn. Now let me try to run Yarn again and see how much time this one takes. Okay, so in this case, you can see it took Yarn actually 85 seconds and Bun took 55 seconds. So it did shave like half a minute of time. When you look at the data, you would see that, I mean, at some point it does not hold up to the thing that it's 33 times faster. It's a few, it's a, like a half a minute, minute to a couple of minutes faster. But when you're talking about at the scale of, you know, 50 seconds or a minute, you would not find Yarn to be 30 times faster. So it's not taking us 30 minutes to install this. It's just taking us 90 seconds, right? So the claim of course is great and it holds true when you are installing small to medium sized packages. But when you are installing so many packages and trust me, we have a lot of packages installed in dependencies as well as dev dependencies. I mean, more or less comes down to the network speed as well. And I don't have a, you know, a slower network. So it's, it's a relatively fast network. It comes down to network speed. It comes down to, you know, the APIs Ban is using, of course, under the hood to copy all of these files. And yeah, that's, that's about it. That's about how fast is Bun as a package manager, of course, shaving off these 30 seconds, 50 seconds, a minute, a couple of minutes is super important and super is super helpful as well. And that's why we use it in some of our production pipelines to just speed up the installs, which is awesome. One thing which is unique with Bun or, you know, which I have mixed feelings about is that it tries to do everything and then a little bit more. So you see that Bun ships with a lot of tooling, which is great. So Bun is, let's just see, Bun is a runtime, so it can run your your scripts, for example. Bun is a package manager, so it can handle your packages. Bun is a transpiler also because it also works with TypeScript. Bun is a test utility also because if you can test it, you know, you can run tests through Bun. Bun is also a bundler, which includes, you know, ES Builder, uh, you know, it's better than ES Build as well. And Bun provides a lot of Bun specific APIs as well. So if you look at Bun APIs, Bun.file is, for example, one of these API, bun.write is one, bun.serve is one, bun.password is also actually, you know, something which is getting provided. So I love this concept that, you know, we don't have to basically do anything. We don't have to install SQLite. We don't have to install Bcrypt, for example. We don't have to install any sort of these utilities. They come all baked in into the utility itself. But this is like a paradigm shift, almost like a paradigm shift, because this goes beyond improving Node.js. This is changing the ecosystem of how JavaScript is run. So Node.js, when we are talking about Bun, a lot of people start comparing it with Node.js, but I don't feel that this is a valid comparison because Bun is doing so much more than Node that it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I just don't understand where is Node now in the picture, right? If five years down the line, let's say Bun becomes 
great one becomes better it's a private company it's you know it's it makes its own decision it makes what apis to add what apis not to add so what this also does is that it provides one the ability to you know break away from javascript in a way so it can just go ahead and start implementing things which are not available in javascript on browser side as well as in no side and that is what exactly this is right it seems like a package you know a package built in so bcrypt is built in like in this but it's actually far more than that you are providing something which is not available in either of the runtimes nor in the web version of javascript nor in node.js and it's not decided by any committee or you know any node.js committee or any public organization this is done by somebody which is a private org which is great it'll just take me a little while to digest this fact uh, that we can move this fast we can break away from node we can break away from javascript we can have the best in class utility but this also means that if you're if you start using bun for example if you start using these apis you're basically vendor logged in the binary right so the moment you do this you something breaks for example this build which i just showed you the versal build it broke and if you're using this we don't have the option to go back right we can't just go back to node.js now why because we are using bun bun will provide node.js compatibility but node.js doesn't have to provide bun compatibility because node.js has been there for 14 years it's completely battle tested it's completely stable right it's used in some of the most critical organization i think netflix also uses is Node.js for their microservices and everything. AWS has, AWS Lambda has a Node.js runtime available. I mean, it's it's pretty common, right? It's not a new thing. Bun, however, is a new thing. This is what a lot of times also afraids me to use Bun in a way that we just don't want to get logged into a binary which is not badly tested yet. I'm not saying this is pro not production ready. I'm not saying anything. It is great. Ease is so much work. It's just that if you ask me on a personal level, and this is completely my opinion, I would say still take a moment take a step to use it from heavy production workloads it might just you know perform everything like it says but it also might not and in that case it's most likely not your problem it's most likely the problem of the runtime itself because it's still growing right it's still battle it's still being battle tested by a lot of people so even though like long story short even though bun 1.0 is here and bun says that it's stable and this production ready we probably would still take some time to adopt this that's all right we are watching from the sidelines we are sharing and we are also using it it's bundler you know and the package manager and installer for a while to see like how it plays out but the runtime the runtime is where the actual benefits and interesting things happens that is something which will still probably take you know a few months or maybe a few years to just see and watch how it's happening and how it's going on but yeah that's that's my honest view and opinion about one 1.0 it's amazing work it's fabulous work making java script so much faster with a drop in replacement you know node is there npx replacement bun x is there node more of course you know you don't need a watcher anymore i think node also ships with a watch flag in node.js 20 uh dot env node ships with that again in node.js 20 so node is catching up but it's you know it's a little slow tsc is interesting because uh you know one one thing which i like about these softwares is that nobody actually mentions that tsc also can perform type checking and it also does it like by default nobody else including es build actually does type checking which is where really the benefit of uh tsc comes in because you don't want to build code which is you know incorrect on types then it makes no sense to just build it fast so mostly in our case i mean at least for our back end we have a blocking step which just pass which just builds and pushes it to the production if the types are safe right otherwise there is no point of using typescript because you can just ship broken code as well so this eight millisecond is impressive when running against tsc but remember that this is not type checking right this is just bundling this is just building your code converting it to typescript to javascript which is easy es build also does that fast enough it's not a complete solution and writing a type checker i think somebody started it as a project i, I forgot the name but it, there was a project in which you know they were taking away type checker from javascript to rust and it's a nightmare because there is so much you can do you have to do to shift a type checker from javascript to the rust world that it just it will take a long long time to support tsc to rust or you know any faster implementation which by the way i believe 
I sincerely believe that Microsoft has any plans or somebody is working vigilantly because that carries probably like equivalent impact of how, you know, BUN, software like BUN is made. Because if you have a faster runtime and a faster transpiler type checker, everything, that would actually speed up things a lot. A lot of time actually in the build time of TypeScript projects, I'm, I can be pretty sure about this is wasted because of type checking, because of this TSC, because nobody else, no bundler actually supports faster type checking right now, which is like a complete solution. Yeah, I mean, that's that's good. Everything else is good. And that's my opinion, right? So let me know what do you think in comments below? Do you think BUN 1.0 is something you will start using on production right away? Do you think it's time to wait and watch from sidelines? Are you already using it? Let me know in the comments below. That is all for this one. And I'm going to see you in the next video really soon.